a pleasure to be to be here. Uh, great, great meeting. Uh, uh, I guess uh, some of you, if you listen carefully to the talk by by Adam Rees, you must have spotted my name already. Uh, I must say that you know, I'm a, a little bit in a con uncomfortable <coughs> position to uh, to talk to the audience who is already looking for some kind of job prior. But I, I'm trying to be positive, you know, uh, very factual, and uh, uh, and let's let's get to the to the, to the argument simply. Uh, okay, so the motivation is is uh, the age of ten, which is which is you know uh, the, the largest discrepancy, which is point of the data. Uh, so eight percent difference, five three month significance. Uh, so this is you know a numerical summary of of what we're talking about. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm not going to be very controversial if I say that you know the question that, that the question if if the Habermas convention is a matter of logical anomaly or systematic that is it's still open, it's open. Uh, I guess if we were to average you know your feelings, you know, where where you are on this scale, I assume that we will be we will be here on the left. So but the goal of my talk is, is, is to, to pull down a little bit you know, the, the, the right hand side you know, to show you know a very different you know, perspective of uh, of looking at you know new sort of kind of systematics. Okay, I'm going to talk about no shift measure right? So this is you know uh, this is a very uh, short summary of so uh, so I you you want to know all relevant details about the validation of by my analysis. So that the main concept is that we have three runs of, of, of the distance ladder. We start to start here with direct measurements of, of distances. These are distance anchors. We have three canonical uh, measurements that basically detach the binary systems in the, the LMC. Uh, Maser, Galaxy, and and uh, 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 Gaia Parabax is just in the Milky Way. Uh, then we propagate these distances using Cepheid, so this is the second run. Uh, and then we go further to the Hubble for using Tampone Supernova. Uh, we we had two talks uh, uh, showing you know, really amazing effort to check you know, if all is fine on you know, the first and the second run. Uh, and uh, I, I'm I'm pretty sure that you know all of you, you know, probably you would say that you know there is a basically very very little chance you know for 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 having any sort of you know systematics you know here. But I'm going to focus here. So on the on the on, the, on what happens you know between the second and the third round of the of the, of the distance ladder, where you step on a supernovae to propagate distances from from roughly 10, 10 20 megaparsec to to the Hubble flow. Okay, so just uh, I would I would start with a little bit of you know, technicality so that you know we'll be sure you know that that we are all on the same page, you know, how, how uh, supernova analysis works. Uh, so this is what we observe, you know, this these are these are light curves. <coughs> yes, so, so supernova observes, you know, with many different uh, uh, filters, bands. Uh, this light curve can be represented by three numbers. Uh, so on the basis of you know uh, very large uh, uh, Database of spectral energy distributions, we have an empirical model which can, which can represent light pairs, observed light pairs in terms of three parameters. Uh, and the procedure is called, you know, everybody's familiar with that light curve PP, right? So the light pairs are, are uh, peak magnitude, traditionally in B band, and B, the shape parameter X1, uh, of slides, which basically describes the width or rate decline. Uh, of the light curve, and then we have observed color C. Uh, 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 and what we have to remember here that this is observed color. So this is this is a color that is corrected by for for Milky Way extinction, but it's not corrected for extinction in the host galaxy, right? So it's a, it's a basically a sum of intrinsic color of supernova and and uh, the extinction in the in its host galaxy. Okay, then, uh, so this is a kind of you know, history. You know, a long time ago, people tried to, to put, you know, uh, peak magnitudes on the Hubble diagram, and they realized, you know, that you know, there is a pretty large scatter point three magnitude. But they also realized that Hubble residuals are correlated with the two remaining light parameters, stretch and color. Yeah? So if you subtract these correlations, basically linear in stretch and linear in color, you can effectively decrease the scatter on your Hubble diagram and you can make your supernova more precise, yes, for, for distance uh, measurement. So, so this, is, uh, this is what we call strip calibration or to supernova standardization. It was, it was proposed more than 20, 25 years ago. And this equation basically underlies all, literally all cosmological analysis, yes. 
you, you, you derive this stats modulally, basically assuming that there is a linear correction in stretch and linear correction in, in, in color. We have a pretty good understanding of, the, of physics behind stretch. Stretch is related to the, to the mass of radioactive nickel, and, and this, uh, this correction is related to some kind of uh, 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 extra absorption features, which are you know, generated at the same time. So this is, this is a pretty physical. However, color correction, it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenological correction. There are two processes inside, yes, combined. Dependence on intrinsic color and dependence on, on extinction, right? On gradient. So, so, so this is this is a, a phenomenological term. Uh, one more thing that we have to remember is that we reduce appreciably the the, the scatter on the half diagram, but we don't reduce to, to zero. <coughs> we end up with irreducible point one point twelve magnitudes uh, uh, on on half diagram, which is a kind of no limitation. So, state of the art strategy is that we fit typically cosmology together with, with strict calibration. Yes, so we have this alpha beta coefficients, linear coefficients in the in the, uh, in the uh, trip calibration, you can see here, plus sigma intrinsic, which is basically a parameter describing this residual scatter yes, on the on the Hubble diagram. That's the state of the art. This is this is what you find in all cosmological papers. Uh, and I want to go through, through a few points, you know, giving you basically motivation, you know, why you shouldn't be satisfied with this. <laughs> so, so first of all, uh, uh, so trip calibration uh, it depends on you know some assumptions which are not often you know expressed uh, explicitly. Trip calibration is universal across redshifts and supernova samples. This is very important. Yes, if we, for example, propagate distances from the calibration sample to the Hubble flow, we assume that it's universal. That these two coefficients are exactly the same, right? Uh, second, we don't have really understanding what is physics behind scatter. There may be, you know, you know, a pretty large space of latent variables, latent physical variables, which are not observed directly, and which gives us, you know, contribution to the scatter. Yes. So what we have to assume is that the distribution of this of these hidden variables are exactly the same, you know, across redshift or across different supernova samples. Any kind of bias can, you know, dangerously propagate into bias in, in this case. Right? If we are sure that you know the distributions are exactly the same, then we can simply decrease errors, you know, like the sigma intrinsic over over square root of, of, of n. So we can simply decrease errors by increasing the sample of, 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 of supernova. There are several other unresolved problems that I want to emphasize here. Uh, we don't know what's the physical origin of intrinsic scatter. We don't know uh, what's the physical origin of the color correction. I will come back to this later. We, we don't connect this formalism actually to other interesting physical properties, like, for example, the existence of two projectile channels. There is no one supernova. There are two classes, two populations of supernova that include two projectile channels. So this is all uh, somehow. Uh, uh, neglected in, in this conversation. Okay, so with this motivation, I'm going to show you uh, an analysis you know, I did uh, a, a year ago. Uh, so this is an analysis based on pre-2022 choose data. So, so for, for, for those of you following closely, so these are 19 calibration galaxies. These are all updated distance anchors, so LMC, uh, Mesa Galaxy, and, and Gaia Parallaxis. And supernova, this is pre-2022, supernova sample, uh, uh, so super cow in, this, in, this, in the same redshift uh, uh, range as, as, as in the shoes, very and so on. So, uh, so the whole measurement, this is basically is based on simultaneous modeling of three these data blocks, yes? The anchors, cephalids, and, and, and supernova. And the total likelihood is basically a product over all likelihoods describing independent uh, data blocks. <coughs> This is basically the same formalism that is also adopted in, in, in recent 2022 uh, paper from the from the Schuss collaboration. So now I'm going to show you. Uh, so if you run, you know, uh, this uh, this analysis with exactly the same way of modeling uh, all details like Cepheids, Gaia zero point, you know, supernova given uh, by, by by trip calibration, then you get 73 plus minus 1.3, so 4.2 sigma tension, right? So that was that was the state of matter before 2022. Now I'm going to show you <coughs> a very important plot. Uh, 
This shows you basically a difference between supernova distance modules and, this, uh, and XFA distance modules. So these are derived uh, uh, parameters from, 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 from modeling uh, uh, with all errors propagated, you can see here, as a function of supernova power. So now you can see that there is something strange here. I mean, if everything works fine in this model, and if we trust you know, that the truth calibration is universal, we shouldn't see any, 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 any trend between delta mu and, 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 and supernova color. And the trend is visible. You can, you can clearly see it on this group of, of, of low color supernova. They have, they, have, they have something you know, between one and two sigma uh, 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 residuals, yes, uh, uh, from, uh, from, from, from zero. So there is a correlation, yes? Of course, you cannot use this diagram to, to quantify this correlation. You have to basically go to your likelihood and test you know, different uh, possible models. So one simple model is basically to ask yourself, OK, what happens you know, if I have two different uh, coefficients of color collection? One in calibration sample, one in the Hubble. Yes? And in addition, I allow extra intrinsic scatter, independent intrinsic scatter in the, in the calibration sample. Yes? Simple empirical question: What what happens? Yes, and if you focus on this, you know, uh, on this panel and, and and this panel, you can see that uh, uh, you you get the main point of the of this, of this result that beta calibration is significantly larger than beta. Uh, if you want to chase you know, each other with how many sigmas, this is 2.4 sigma, and at the same time you can see that there is no any indication of intrinsic scatter. So the fit is consistent with zero intrinsic scatter. If you repeat this fit with zero intrinsic scatter, the difference between beta calibration and beta uh, rises to 3.8 sigma. It's, it's really strong. It's really strong. Uh, so that's the first statement. So, so 4.2 4 sigma, uh, how the constant goes to get together with intrinsic anomaly in the supernova standardization. And you can see that in the, in the, in the data. Uh, so now uh, I want to I want to show you know, what are possible consequences for for Hubble constant measurement. Of course, you know uh, there's, a, there's the problem is under the timing, yes, because because uh, the geometrically, if you represent measurement of H dot as basically measuring distance between brightness color uh, 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 relation in the in the calibration and Hubble flow, uh, it's well it's well defined. You know if the slope is the same, yes, you could make the slope the same, but if the slope is different. Uh, H naught depends basically on the choice of your reference <coughs> color, and this is just a proof of concept. What happens? Okay, what happens if I if I choose different reference colors for matching uh, supernova brightness color relation in the calibration sample in the Hubble flow? Yes. If I choose zero, zero is uh, nothing special, but you know very close to the, to the mean color in the in, in, in the supernova sample. If I choose zero. Uh, we recover, you know, uh, uh, the standard shoes value, 73.1 plus minus 1.3. If we go to negative value, so if I choose the reference color, uh, which is basically, basically which represent basically blue supernova, yeah, minus 0.12, you can clearly see that you know we can we can go down down to uh, to, to the blind value of the, of the Hubble constant. This is just a proof of concept. Uh, uh, Adam raised you know, a very important argument that, of course, we don't have you know, a physical understanding of what is what is really behind the difference between beta power and beta, and what is really uh, the physical understanding of this of this color, right? So let me let me go to to the to the, to the second part of my talk, which is basically uh, I will start with the statement that you know, the key to understand. Uh, the, the physics behind behind this anomaly is, is 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 understanding how we residuals, right? I mean, this is not just you know a fudge factor in our modeling. I mean, there is physics behind. What I show you, this is how we residual as a function of stretch. You can clearly see you know some non-trivial bimodality here. Uh, here, as a function of of, of uh, color, uh, you can clearly see this kind of opening effect. You know, there is a correlation. You can check that there is a correlation between how we residuals and color. There is something really not trivial behind. People started studying this, and actually we have pretty good idea that this correlation between our residual and color this is due to dust. There is basically a wide range of possible extinction parameters, which gives you know a range of slopes, yes, uh, which, which, are, uh, which is not accounted for in the trip calibration where you assume one single slope, right? 
What about this uh, uh, picture here, this, this bimodality? Let's look at this diagram. It shows you a uh, stretch parameter as a function of local and a specific star formation rate. You can see it here two distinct you know, clusters of, of, of supernovae, one associated with young stellar uh, environment, star forming, which in dark, and so on, and another one which is associated with old uh, uh, stellar environment. This is not something new, this is, this is, this is a well-known fact, and if you add you know, time arguments, so basically uh, consideration you know, what's the time delay between star formation and, and, uh, and the ex explosion, uh, you can associate this young supernovae with single degenerate progenitor channel and all with double degenerate progenitor channel. Just because you know, they happen instantaneously, almost instantaneously after the start, start formation period, and they are much delayed uh, after the start formation period. Okay, uh, so here we have this kind of you know, flow chart. You know, there is, as I said at the beginning, there is no one type one, uh, type one supernovae. We have two channels populating different stellar environments having possibly different intrinsic properties, uh, having different extrinsic properties, different maybe dust, typical uh, uh, common you know, densities of dust, you no know, extinction and so on. So we go through this bifurcation by diagram and I want to learn that these are three parameters. Yes? So now I'd like to go another way around. I want to show you the result of forward modeling of uh, two population variation theoretical model. So this is a this is kind of a mathematical approach you know, to explain lack of parameters in terms of physically motivated uh, 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 latent variables. So latent variables are in green here. You can clearly see that color is basically a sum of intrinsic color and red in EB minus B. There is an extinction parameter here, uh, and there is also you know extra parameter <coughs> WSN which measures the uh, relative weights of the two populations, right? Uh, we can fit this model to, uh, to supernovae in the, in the Hubble diagram. It's a very complicated <coughs> summary here. Uh, uh, but let me quickly go through this. So what you, see, what, you, what you see here, this is basically supernova magnitude uh, with respect to trip calibration. So basically Hubble residual as a function of stretch and as a function of observed color. In green we have data, in purple we have model. So the first fact is that the model explains 100% of Hubble residuals. You can fit this model without any 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 extra intrinsic factors, right? And and we have no concrete physical interpretation of all basic properties of data, like like the shape of the distribution in X1, showing by modality, which you associate with the presence of two supernova populations. Uh, we have statistically, statistically using physically motivated priors for reddening, we can disentangle the probabilistically the effect of reddening and intrinsic colors. So you can see here, for example, that young uh, supernova population, they have a uh, much larger reddening than old stellar population. This is something very intuitive, yes, because they are in very young stellar environments, so there is more dust, and you should be able to see more, more, uh, more reddening. At the same time, they are miraculously uh, very blue, intrinsically. Minus 0.12. If you remember one of the values I, I, I showed you, you know, a few slides before, this is exactly the same value from 12 that you need to, to get the trunk together with the Hubble constant. Okay, I'm a little bit delayed, but I'm almost done. So now, now we have physically motivated model, Bayesian character model, uh, which we can use to address uh, a very fundamental question. What's the difference in terms of uh, environmental parameters between the calibration sample and Hubble model? So obviously, this is just you know, an example of, of, of uh, uh, in galaxies from the, from the calibration sample, beautiful pictures. What you can see here, these are all extreme late type galaxies. These are not, this is, this is not a representative sample of the Hubble plot. These are late, very late type galaxies. And we should expect that probably environments of supernovae in the calibration sample are different than the Hubble plot, right? So now we can ask ourselves, okay, whether RB, extinction parameter, whether uh, reddening, uh, whether the ratio of the two populations are they the same in the Hubble flow and the calibration or, or, or they are different, right? So this is, you know, I must say that this is the first, the first, uh, you know, uh, model which, which, which allows you to do that, you know, fully quantitatively, right? <coughs> okay, so uh, parameter space is really vast. So I, I'm, going, I'm going to show you here, you know, just the most essential part of this result, yes? 
So the commons looks like, like the mean from left to right. This shows you the mean uh, extinction coefficient in the hub of flow calibration. Then we have relative weights of, of superintending the hub of flow in the calibration and the resulting Hubble constant. So let's focus on these two uh, green panels. So first of all, we can see that uh, the, the extinction coefficient uh, in the calibration sample is, uh, is, is significantly higher. It's around uh, 5.5. Which, which is basically, uh, if you look at the distribution of, you know, of all RB uh, uh, values in the, in the Hubble flow, this is, this is basically 1.5 outlier. Okay? This is what we, what we get from this analysis. At the same time, you can also see that there is a different, <coughs> uh, the, the differences in the relative ratios of the, of the supernova. Uh, uh, in, uh, in the Hubble flow, we have something between 30 40% of old. <coughs> of all the supernova population. In, uh, in the calibration sample, we have only upper limit, which means, which means that calibration galaxies are dominated by young uh, supernova population, which is also you know, something very intuitive. You know, that, you know, that they are associated with young stellar environments. And this is what we, what we see here you know, in terms of you know, these parameters. This may look like a kind of you know, conspiracy result, but this is this is what you get, you know, when you put all this, you know, uh, 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 like equals together, you know, with this population model. 67.2, larger error, larger error, uh, plus minus 2.6. The error is larger because, you know, we have more degrees of freedom in our model. We model, you know, mean extinction parameter in the, <coughs> in the, in the calibration, so, so this basically contributes to, 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 extra, to extra errors. Uh, there's a very intuitive interpretation, right? So, so, so this goes back you know, to, the, to, the, to the idea I'm finishing. So, so this, this uh, reference color minus 0.12 that I showed you, you know, some, some, some slides ago, this is basically intrinsic color of young supernova population which dominate in the calibration sample. We have physical interpretation of, 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 this, of this reference color. We have physical interpretation of the difference in the slope of the color correction. This is this are basically two different mean values of extinction parameter. That's it. That's the story. Uh, you can look, you can look at the de details. You can ask yourself, okay, so what if I run this two population model assuming that extrinsic parameters, population properties of extrinsic parameters like reddening, like extinction parameter, they are exactly the same in the calibration sample and the carbon flow. You get 70. Consistent value, right? If we start with this assumption, yes, we get 73, <coughs> there's no error. If I change this assumption, if I relax this assumption, the Hubble constant value goes down, error goes a bit up. Uh, yes, so uh, this is my summary. So uh, sorry for uh, all these no cell citations, but you know, <laughs> if, you, if you want to read about all these details, there are lots of technical, technical details in this two population by variation diagram modeling. That's 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 the paper. This is about an anomaly, and the new and the new measurement of the Hubble constant will, will come up uh, soon, very soon, I hope. Yeah. Thank you so much.
which square we didn't know that we placed them on the second rung versus we placed them on the third rung. Another observer somewhere else in the universe would have different supernovae on their second and third rung. So I don't, I don't think there's a physical motivation here. Uh, but then going back to the empirics, um, I guess as I showed in my talk, and I think we agreed on when we went back and forth on this, when you use the whole data set, the empirical evidence for a different color law for these, the second one supernovae is only 1.2 sigma. Now, um, uh, so I don't, I guess I don't understand what's past that point. Everything you showed doesn't seem to be the most recent data, so. Uh, so, okay. There was there was no any question actually that I have comments. So maybe yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm comments to your comments. I'll ask two questions. The first part is how does supernovae, why are supernovae different on the second rung than the third rung? And my second question is um, if the evidence is 1.2 sigma for the full sample from Pantheon Plus of the local sample, why 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 is that significant? I'm presenting, okay, there are, there, are, there are many issues. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry, I, I was wonder, wondering if you Mr. start on my talk with that. Uh, uh, we had, you know, pretty, pretty, you know, large disagreement now because we, as we exchanged, you know, email. Uh, so, so I don't confirm the result. You know, there were, there were issues with, with duplicates, you know, the whole thing, the slope is, is, is pulled pulled by just two supernovae, which, uh, which, which are not to be, let's, let's not go into details, but, you know, I, I just want to, Straight out of the Pantheon Plus sample, I don't. We, we don't make choices on individual supernovae. It's, it's, we have data sets and we combine them. So, right. Uh, so, so please, I uh, uh, don't, don't, don't put put my name on your slide. You know, I don't, I don't confirm your result. Okay, <laughs> we, we we simply disagree. Uh, and uh, and regarding you know what's the what's the premise you know to 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 consider you know any difference between extrinsic so environment related you know properties of of the calibration galaxies and the Hubble flow I think that the key point is here and this is not something that, this is not something controversial so so there were many independent groups running forward full forward modeling with Bayesian models where you can infer. Uh, the mean and scatter in extinction parameter, right? Uh, so I agree with you that yes. There so be, may I? Not, there could be two types of uh, type A supernovae. Let's say I'm just asking how nature puts one type on one rung and the other on the other rung in relation to their distance from us. Uh, so I will continue this argument, an you know, empirical argu argument. The mean and. Uh, is, is 4.1, which is consistent with the Milky Way, but at, at the same time we have huge scatter, three times larger scatter than than, than in the in the Milky Way. So e every time we compare distances, you know, from different uh, uh, supernova samples, this is really super important to check that we are not outlier in the distribution of of, uh, of extinction parameters. Simply like this. That's an empirically motivated uh, question. I'm sorry, then I still didn't understand. What, why, if there are two populations, why is one population on one rung and the other on the other rung? Uh, uh, po populations, uh, 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 you mean supernova populations, or, or, or you are... You are why is one you're saying one supernova population is what we have on rung two, and the other supernova population is what we have on rung three. And I'm just asking how that can be. Uh, okay, so the ratios are different. So you have you have more young supernova population in the Hubble flow than uh, so sorry in the calibration sample than in the Hubble flow. Uh, so it's not. No, it's, it's, how do we know when we pick supernovae to, to be on rung two and three to, to pick them from these different populations? Uh, okay, so in other, in other, yes, yes, in other two, in other, okay. These are all coin flips of one population or the other. Why do we get mostly one population on one rung and the other? Right, right, because, you know, we want to observe cephids. Just a quick comment in order Yes, cephids, cephids, cephids can be observed only in, 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 in very, very, you know, late type star forming galaxies, right? So it's a, it's a, I guess it's nothing, nothing controversial. It's a, it's a natural selection, selection effect, yes? 
So we are looking, we are looking at very young stellar environments. Okay, probably we should stop this question. This is the concept of the conference, eh? to disagree right. about the, the tension. Yes. So, so let's move, because there are yes, a couple yes. of questions also in the uh, chat by Dylan, right? Yeah, Dylan, if you want, you, you might talk. Ah. Yeah, hi. Um, so, so one thing that Adam brought up is that, that the difference in the color luminosity related, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this, but, but I just want to ask one question. Uh, the difference in the color luminosity relations uh, between the two rungs um, is 1.2 sigma or something like that in the latest pantheon plus. And in your plot, um, if you go to your corner triangle plot, yeah, um, you have R B is differing by an enormous amount. Yeah. Um, my question is. The sigma. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Um, uh, th this this could drive the difference. Um, <coughs> in, in, in your likelihood, my question is: at least in your paper from last year, in your likelihood, you have the Planck H naught in the likelihood. So is the is that in this likelihood? Uh, could, could you repeat if, uh, what is included in the likelihood? Yeah. In, in your paper from yeah. last year, yeah. you have the supernova likelihood, yeah. which has the Planck H not in it. Oh, but this is okay. You know, that's a uh, no, no. It, that's, that paper was not about you know measurement of H not, right? So, so, so basically, you know, absolute magnitude. This is basically you know modulo log log H in the paper. There is there is no H not measurement there. Yeah, yeah. Apart from this proof of concept, yes, that, 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 that I should that I show you. I don't assume any Planck. Uh, I, I don't assume any 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 Planck uh, H not. Okay. You, yeah. I, I think we need to double check that. The shape, the shape of the expansion history, which is normally you know quantified by 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 Q naught. I assume that this is Planck, but this is this is not a relevant factor. I mean, we know that yeah, you can marginalize over all H naught values, and it doesn't change anything. So the shape of the of the expansion history is Planck, but normalization is not a Okay. It, it, the, the main reason I ask is because the difference in RBs that you find is so significant. Nobody's ever found anything like that. Um, so it's surprising to me that you would find something like that, especially when, if you just look at the color luminosity relations, which we've seen in, in discussion together, that, that you, there are only 1.2 sigma discrepancy. So how could you have a significantly different dust population when the color luminosity relations agree? So that, that's, that's, it just doesn't fundamentally make sense. And to me, I, I think I know why, but we can talk about it after. Uh, I should I should also mention that uh, that there is an actually another bias in the calibration sample that is not fully really quantified fully. Uh, so the, in the calibration sample, uh, when we are looking at galaxies where we easy, where we can easily uh, observe uh, cepheids, we also want to have uh, uh, not particularly reddened supernovae. This is one of the criteria uh, criteria in the in the in selecting this calibration sample. So keeping this in mind, it's, it, it would be very nice to have you know, exact you know, some kind of mathematical formulation, you know, how, you know, how many red and supernovae, what fraction you know, we reject this. But as a matter of fact, you know, we, we ignore some, uh, some uh, red and supernovae. So it means that, uh, I'm sorry, let me go to, the, to this one. So it means that constraints uh, on, on the mean reddening in the calibration sample, it's basically a lower limit. And the constraints on RB in the calibration sample is an upper limit. And the balance between them depends you know, on exact you know, uh, uh, selection function in, in color for, 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 for supernova. So, so this, this value, you know, it may look like you know, relatively high, but it can grow you know, easily to, to five. Five is not, it's not particularly strange. You know, we have lots of, lots of uh, you know, measurements of extension parameter in the Milky Way around five, even, even, even more. Okay, a last quick question, and then we can discuss all this in the welcome drinks because we're running out of time. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Congratulations for the I think not only the the to look at the look at the in the analysis of the supernova and see what happens with 
It's not a subject that I meant to do, but I think it's very important that I, and I'd like to congratulate you for seeing that. Now, my question is the following. Uh, I think that there are two possibilities here for this. Uh, either what you suggest, which is the contract to be involved in the young But there is also another option, which is the distance. Maybe the distance, there is also a role that has a discriminating parameter. Now, this can be tested very simply. You just select all the you forget about calibration and the uh, hard go, and you put all the old galaxies on one rack, you run one pin, and the others you put together and check if you miss that in the action or it's between. That's one way. The other way, if it's different, you try a very different thing with the uh, degree of fit of the end of this and you see if there's a distance where this effect is even a problem. So have you tried to do any of those? Yes, yes, and uh, actually. <coughs> Okay, it may sound like a predictable really cool content, but we may think of some kind of you know, variance in, in terms of the extinction. So our calibration sample is, 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 is very local. It's, it's, it's up to roughly 10 megaparsec around us. Uh, there's so many factors. These are, these are you know, environments which are dominated by by activists, you know, probably not activists. So I, I think it's a relevant question, you know, what, what, what is the cosmic variance in, the, in terms of, you know, that content, fixation, uh, on scale of, you know, on scale of, you know, the person. The calibration, the sound goes up to 40 yeah. 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 Very good. So let us thank the speaker again.